he is good. His mercy endures forever. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. How awesome it is to be back in the house of the Lord again. Amen. All right. So our opening scripture is going to come from Psalm 66, verses 1 through 4. And they read, to the chief musician, a song, a song. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome you are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name, say Lord. Amen. I, what I love about the word of God is, is that it is definitive, right? There is no ambiguity in the word of God. If you feel ambiguous or feel confusion, then we know that is not of God, right? So I love when I read the word and it says, make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. That's everybody. That's everything. It don't matter what you think. It don't matter what you want to do. All is definitive. It is all inclusive. So I, I just praise the Lord for that. And how it says, all the earth shall worship you. All the earth. So you may not want to do it today. You may not want to do it tomorrow. But you go do it whether you want to do it or not, right? And I'm the type of person that I really don't like people telling me what to do. I don't know about you. Maybe that's my testimony, right? I want it to be my choice to do something. And I'm just so, so happy that I choose the one true living God, that I choose the all-wise God. I choose. And so for me, I'm not going to be forced to worship. I give my worship knowledge of your son Jesus Christ Lord God your word says that we all will do this and we are so happy Lord God that we can come to you freely just accepting who you are acknowledging who you are telling others about who you are we thank you and we praise you Lord God that you cover us each and every day that you guide us each and every day that you bless us each and every day for one more moment with breath in our lungs, Lord God, is a blessing. And we give you all the glory, honor, and the praise that you see fit, that we continue to do your soul-saving work. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let us worship the Lord our God this morning. Come on, if you come to give God the praise... Come on, stand on your feet. Come on, holler at God and say, I love you, Jesus. I come to praise you, Jesus. I come to worship you, Jesus. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Come on, let's make a joyful noise in this house. Hallelujah. We're going to praise the wonderful name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's get our hearts and our minds and our bodies just ready to worship the Lord our God. For he is good, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let us worship him.
you're grateful, just say, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful. Grateful, Lord God, for your power. Grateful for your strength, Jesus. Grateful for your spirit, Lord.
everybody sing flowing from flowing from lift it up my heart all the issues up all the issues up Can I just hear it one more time? Then? Sing it out to the Lord, flowing from my heart. Thank you for 
allowing us to come humbly but boldly to your throne of grace. We thank you for that privilege, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us your word. Thank you, Father God, for your love letter to us, Lord God. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. We praise you. We worship you. And we give you our all, Lord God. In Jesus' name.
want to say, I thank you, Lord. You're making a way where there was no way. The doctor prescribed medicine, but Jesus, you are medicine. So thank you for your healing, Jesus. Your psychiatrist may give you insight, but Jesus is my peace. Thank you, Jesus. Your financial advisor may arrange your portfolio, but he supplies my needs. Thank you, Jesus. Take your house, but he is my rock and my fortress. Thank you, Jesus. achievements, it's not our money, it's not how much status we got, it's not our influence, it's not our positions, it's Jesus. Hey, can I say this? Look, whatever you need is here. Now, now you may say, Pastor, you don't know what I need. I don't need to know. Whatever you need, the answer is Jesus. So whatever you need, it's here. Whatever you brought you here, it's here. Your sadness is here, whatever your issue is. It don't matter. Because there are multiple, there are multiple issues, but the same answer. Multiple problems brought us here, but it's the same answer. So whatever you need, as long as Jesus is here, your healing is here. Your deliverance is here. Your breakthrough is here. Your sanity. Your sanity. Your peace. Whatever you need is here. And because it's here, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. We'll be in the book of Luke this morning. Luke chapter 5. Y'all ready for the word? I'm ready to give the word. Luke chapter 5, and we are in this Jesus Project series. And as I told you last time we were together, we're going to talk about another aspect of Jesus, unfold another layer, another dimension of Jesus in this teaching. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. We bless that wonderful name. So glad to be back with you all uh, from North Carolina and Georgia. Somebody told me on the phone, you've been there so long, you say North Carolina like it's one word. <laughs> so let me get Calified. North Carolina, that's where we were. Of course, we were an hour flight away from our baby, so we stopped by Georgia before we came to California. So we were able to spend time with family and see those babies again. If it looked like I lost weight, I did all right here where my wallet is. <laughs> lost a whole lot of weight right there. <laughs> <laughs> like every time the sun came up, it was like my account was like, ding, 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 ding. every time, every single time. That whole thing about Georgia's cheaper, the devil is a lie. <laughs> Same inflation in Cali as in Loganville, Georgia. It'll get you. But I do thank God for being back in the house. I missed the house. I miss fellowshipping. I miss seeing your face. I miss being with you. I miss being in the house. And I'm ready to preach and teach. For those of you online, God bless you. So glad to have you with us. So glad for you to join in with us. Those of us who are part of the family that are traveling. I know Sister Simmons traveling and others are traveling. Uh, the Nettles family are traveling and they're still online with us. Thank you. And those who are visiting with us virtually, we, we praise God for your presence. And those of you who are with us in the house, we praise God for your presence. But I'm ready for the word. And I must warn you, I got two weeks worth of rest. I got a, not a lot of sleep, but I got a lot of energy right now 
ready to preach the word of God. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so on fire about it. And I just want to tell you something about powerful thing. Whenever you are speaking and teaching and preaching about the life of Jesus, it just hit different. It just hit different. And we have been in the Gospels for the better part of this year. And we're going to continue to stay there because I think this is the season that we need to know about Jesus. Luke chapter 5. Come with me. If you have your word, please stand with us. And if you don't, please stand with us. At home, I ask that you stand. I know it ain't my house and I don't have a right to tell you what to do in your house. But we are in the house. And I ask that you stand for the respect and reverence of the Lord. Or at least put yourself in a posture to receive. Get up off the couch. Put the coffee down. Let's at least get ready to get some word today. Amen. Luke chapter 5. I am excited. I am excited. And we are bringing Bible study to church again. So let's see what happens. Um, Let's see what happens. Luke chapter 5, the Bible says, And it came to pass, as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Some people say the Sea of Galilee or the Sea of Tiberias is all the same. They're geographically the same place, just different names. So don't be confused. The Bible is absolutely not inaccurate. And saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking or when he had finished speaking, he spoke unto Simon and said, launch into the deep and let your nets down for a draught. That's powerful because if you have a Bible that has Jesus words in red, so far this is red. So what we call it in agape here, that's truth on top of truth with a truth cherry on top because it is the word of God and Jesus is speaking directly. He's saying, launch out and let down. Can y'all say that with me? Launch out. Yeah. Why? Because Jesus said it. Y'all ready? Who God? And Simon answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and we have taken nothing. But nevertheless, at thy word, I let down the net. And when this was done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. And they bacon unto their partners, which were in other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both ships so that they both began to sink. <laughs> And when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished at all that were with him, and the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so also was James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. I must tell you that you won't get the idea because we're going to look at this from a different angle. Pastor, it's not theologically unsound. This scripture is indeed a really good picture of our responsibility as disciples. We got that, right? We got that, that it's our responsibility to go out in the lake. The church should not be an aquarium. It should be a place where we go out into the lake and catch the fish. Uh, But that ain't what we're going to talk about. I just want to let you know that I know that that's what it says. And they brought, verse 11, their ships to land. They forsook all and followed him. You may have your seats. You may have your seats today. Ooh, Lord. Got to wait for God to stop doing it. Let me pray and let us get started. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to preach and teach your word. We thank you for the power that is your word. We thank you for what you're speaking to us in this hour. We thank you and bless your name for how you're telling us to go out into the deep and drop our nets. We thank you, oh God, for what the power of your word says. We thank you right now that the application of your word will be applied and each and every soul here in this place or online will take what you have taught us today and apply it to our lives that we may be better. So Holy Ghost, right now we ask that you speak as your word is blessed. We ask that everything comes from me. God comes from me uh, uh, and to the people that it comes directly from your Holy Ghost power that gives us knowledge and revelation, God. Help us to see your word in a new and unique way. God, help us to see the power of your word and the life-changing elements of your word. So speak to us all now, for we are listening. Now we pray that everything that is in me, everything that is about me, and everything that I know, erase it, for it is futile. Just let your word speak and lives will be changed. 
We thank you right now that your servant is a vessel before your people. Accept my worship today. Empty myself so that you may fill me with all that you desire. We thank you for what shall transpire of this time in your word. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hey, I want to talk to you today a little bit about something. <clears throat> I want to talk about a fantastic voyage. Don't do it. <laughs> Get it out your system. Say it in your head. All right? Just sail along. Come on, just. <laughs> now we got that out the way. Let's get to work. A fantastic voyage. What we have been talking about the last maybe eight months in this church is about how Jesus is Jesus. Can, 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 may I? Jesus, first of all, was a miracle worker. And we learned that a miracle is something that God can do that we can't do. And we saw the power of Jesus being manifested as his ability to change things and restore things and build things and create things. We see the miracle working power of Jesus. And then we talked about how Jesus is our model, how God or Jesus is the manifestation of God on the earth. And we now are the manifestation of Jesus on the earth as God is seen through Jesus. Now, Jesus got to be seen through us. Come on, come on, come on. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. He's the model. And then we talk about how he was the mode of salvation. We talked about how salvation only came because we have a buried, dead, risen Savior that got up in the gates of hell, cannot prevail. Sunday school time, eh? And then we talked about how he's the manufacturer of life. Did we not say that he give us life and that more abundantly? And it ain't about living. It's about life. It ain't about breathing. It's about breath. And now we're going to talk about how Jesus is our motivation. He's our model. He, he's our miracle worker. He, he's the mold of salvation. He's a manufacturer of life. And now he's our what? Motivation. Woo, God, can I tell you what motivation means? Motivation means a influence, a force that drives you to initiate, change, or terminate behavior. It is a force that drives you to initiate, continue, or change behavior. Can I give it to you like the brother, uh, a brother who wrote this poem? Uh, I believe his name is Charles Studd, Paul Studd, one of the two. He wrote a poem, says, if my life, it comes and leaves too fast, but only what you do for Christ will last. Okay, now I'm in your house. Uh, what I'm trying to say here is that when you understand really true Christianity, Jesus is not only our motivation, but our inspiration. The idea here is that we ought to be like him. First John 2 and 6 says that if you walk like him or if you want to be in him, you need to walk like him. That everything that we do in this life, ought to be driven by the influence of Jesus, that he is indeed our driving force, our motivation. And Paul said it this way, there's no other foundation laid except the foundation of Christ. And everything you do ought to be built off that foundation. What you do for Christ will last. So when I want to talk about this, you say, what that got to do with a fantastic voyage? Let me tell you, because there are times in our Christian life. Can I just speak real today? Can I just get real, real with it? I've been gone, so let's get right to it. Here's the deal, that many of us as Christians are walking around burnt, tired, unmotivated, and uninspired, and living spiritually unfulfilled lives. And then there's times when we're struggling. That there's times that we come to church and we lack the motivation. That we have gotten so accustomed to the custom that we're stuck there. And now I want to talk to you about how Jesus sees us in our messed up state. And he loves us and he has so much compassion for us that he will find us where we're broken. He'll find us where our hands down and he'll lift us up. Woo! Does it say Psalm 3? Uh, that, 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 oh, my God, you are a shield for me, your glory, and the lift up of my head. Psalm 27 says he'll lift my head up above my enemies round about me. Habakkuk chapter 3 says that when the fig trees don't produce nothing, he says when the olives don't come, and when the sheep have left the fold, and when there's no cattle in the stalls, he says, I will still bless the Lord. Because there's something about Jesus that knows when you're unmotivated, when you're struggling, he knows how to come and meet you and lift you up. Yeah. So this fantastic voyage today I want to talk to you about 
is a brother named Peter and his buddies that are in the same position that many of us are in. They're broken, they're tired, they're uninspired, they lack motivation, and they need somebody like Jesus to come and lift their heads. How many of you in the house today can relate to the fact that you need a Jesus to give you a push? Can, can we just stop playing in church? Stop faking in church? Let's keep it real. We come up here broken up. And Jesus sees it. Jesus sees it. And he loves us so much, he says, I'm going to find you, and I'm going to pick you up, and I'm going to fix your brokenness. I'm going to give you the motivation that you need to keep on keeping on. Those of you that have stopped, oh, my God, I don't mean to go here yet, but I am. Stop tripping. Jesus sees it. So this fantastic voyage is more than just a boat ride by the lake. It is a spiritual journey that Jesus takes us on to take us from brokenness to our destiny. Can we preach today? First point, I want to get right to it. There's three things I want to talk to you about. And I want to talk to you about how powerful Jesus is. And I want to talk to you about this fantastic voyage, this ship ride, babe. And the first point I want to talk to you about is this is that Jesus is an intimate God. Here's my point. <laughs> he knows how to attach himself to the distracted. Can I, can I say it again? Because Jesus is an intimate God, he knows how to attach himself to the distracted. Pastor, what in the world are you talking about, man? Come with me. Come with me. Luke chapter 5, verse 1. Let me show you where we get that from. He knows how to attach himself to distract it because he's an intimate God. It says, so it was, as the multitude pressed about to hear him and hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Ooh, Holy Ghost. Downloads are coming. And saw two boats standing by the lake. But, ho, 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 ho. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon, and asked him to put it out from the land, and he sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. Holy Ghost, here we go. Oh, God. Luke chapter 5, verse 1 is a continuation of Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Let me paint the picture for you so I can get it nice and pretty, Brother Leroy. Luke chapter 4 shows that Jesus was tempted by the devil. That was the very first experience. The Spirit led him to be tempted. We see he was victorious over the tempting. Now we go in Luke chapter 4, and he leaves where he is, and he, now he is in Nazareth. He is now preaching and teaching the Word of God. And Luke chapter 4, verse 18, which is the cornerstone of that whole text, he says, I have come to preach the good news, the gospel, to those who are poor. I've come to heal the brokenhearted. I come to set the captives free. I come to accept, uh, to present the acceptable year of our Lord. He closed the book and said today that this is testified, this is manifested right in your presence. And then he goes on and they say, uh, Jesus, we don't like your teaching, man. Could you skedaddle? He says, cool. A prophet don't have no honor in his own space. So he left Nazareth and then he went to Capernaum, walked right in the synagogue and started preaching and teaching. Watch what I'm telling you here. There there was a man in the synagogue with an unclean spirit or a demonic spirit. The Bible says that Jesus cast the demon out. He went and the crowd got bigger. So now Jesus go on ahead down to Peter's mother-in-law's house. He heads down to Peter's mother-in-law's house and she had a fever. Now I don't know about you, but let me just break it down. There was no HMO, no PPO. There was no medical advancements. There was no penicillin. There was no z pack There was no nothing like that. There was no IVs. There was no specialized treatment. If you had a fever, you pretty much was about to die. There was no way for you to get blessed unless somebody who is the blessed or come and touch you. And the Bible says that he touched her and her fever left. And then the crowd got bigger. And after he healed her, he kept on skipping. And now he has went from Capernaum and is working his way to the Sea of Galilee where the lesson is. And the Bible says that they brought all kind of people to Jesus. People with diseases. People that was broken. People that was hurting. People that was demon possessed. And the Bible says he healed them all. And the crowd got bigger. Mm. And then it gets down to the end of the verse. It said, Jesus, can you please stay and hang out with us? Jesus says, nah, 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 nah. 
It was fun. But my calling is to preach the gospel of Jesus and to bring the kingdom of God. And the Bible says that's why I came. You can read it right there. So now we see in Luke chapter 5, ooh, hallelujah. Luke chapter 5, the Bible says that people are around him and the crowd is pressing him and he's talking about the word of God. Now, can I break this down, please? When I'm preaching, I'm preaching the word of God. But it ain't the same thing Jesus was doing. <laughs> if I am a man of God and stand in the place of God and the Holy Ghost has given me a word to speak and I speak it, I'm speaking the word of God. But it ain't the same thing Jesus was doing. Can I break it down? See, I am a conduit by which the word comes through me. So I can speak the word of God. But Jesus, who is the word, more than speaking the word of God, he is literally speaking God's words. So what came out of Jesus' mouth, that's why people were changed and blessed and delivered. Because there's something powerful about the word of God, and there's something even more powerful about the words from. That's why the crowd got big. Because Jesus was speaking the truth right from God's mouth. Because he is. Can, can I push it? Because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm almost there. When we come to this church or any church, you better make sure you come for the word. Power in the word. And what has happened here, our unfulfilled lives as Christians and our defeated lives as Christians is because we lack an intimacy with the word. Quit crying. Because the word says we may endure for but joy. Quit tripping at your friend. Left. The Bible says that he is a friend that sticketh closer. Quit feeling unloved. The Bible says that nothing can separate you from the... Quit thinking about the past. He said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. Could worry about what you lack. The Bible says he will supply all mine. See, if we knew the word, we'll have the power to do. Jesus is speaking the words. Woo! Can I introduce you to the tragedy of the text now? Mm, I feel like preaching. Jesus, all this going on, Jesus' crowd gets bigger, and they literally push Jesus, Minister Tony, into the lake. The crowd got so big. I want to give you the picture. The crowd got so big, Jesus is running out of space. He's at Lake Gennesaret, where the mountains of Lebanon on the north have the snow caps come down and give it water, and it goes down into the Jordan River, and it empties into the Dead Sea. And if you look from the north to the west, there's a beautiful garden and plush area by that place. And the water at Lake Gennesaret is so flat that when Jesus spoke, he didn't need a sound, man. His sound just bounced off the waters. His sound just bounced off the mountains. And even though Jesus is bagging up, even though Jesus is preaching, even though Jesus is in this place, watch this, watch this. Here's the tragedy. Watch this, Brother Jesse. Oh, God, something's wrong. What's wrong? Jesus is speaking. Jesus in the house. The word of God is going forth. Deliverance is happening. People are getting demons cast out of them. People are being blessed. But guess what? There's a group of folks, brother, brother, that's sitting there and cleaning their nets. Y'all, y'all, I said it too fast. I said, brother, let me say it again. Let me say it again. Church is going on. And they brought their Saturday night to Sunday morning. Okay, I'll be nicer. I spent some time in the country. I, I got Southern charm, so I'm going to be back off of that. Let me put it this way then. They're sitting there dealing with the evidence of their incompetence. They're, they're, they're sitting there fiddling with their failures. Jesus is speaking. And when Jesus speaks, 
things change and you have become distracted by your failures from the night before. The Bible says that while Jesus is speaking and changing things, they're washing their nets because they didn't catch no fish. Don't you dare be in the house. And Jesus is talking and he's ministering and he's blessing and he's caring. And you can't get the blessing because you're distracted by what you Okay, I'll testify for us. I've had to preach broken before. I've seen you guys get blessed by what the word of God is saying to you, and I'm hurting. I've seen people depression get lifted by what God has spoken from this pulpit, and I'm depressed. Am I too real? Because I can stop. I've been isolated and congregated people together. I understand what it's like for Jesus to be speaking over here, and I miss the blessing because I'm distracted with my incompetence. And if they were only just put down their nets and let the word of God penetrate them, their lives would change. Don't come to church and miss God speak because you're fiddling and faddling with your brokenness. Jesus is speaking, but they're washing their nets. Say this, I'm going to point number two. Somebody say, thank God, though. Thank Put the dough in it like y'all familiar. Put thank God, though. Thank God. That Jesus is a master multitasker. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That while he's preaching... And blessing. Rev, the crowd is what? Big. And he goes to Simon and says, Simon, can I get in your boat? I love that. That Jesus wasn't so caught up in the crowd that he did not understand that there was somebody who was distracted by their brokenness. Eric, can I get in your boat? Leroy, can I, hey, ain't it good? That Jesus says, I, I know you're distracted, and I'm attracted to the distracted. <laughs> I, 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 I'm attracted to the broken. I got a thing for failures. Do you not know that Lake Gennesaret is the lowest freshwater place or source of water in all of ancient history? You know why that's powerful? Because when man is at their lowest... It qualifies us for God's glory to be shown at his greatest. Thank God that Jesus wasn't so caught up on being a preacher of L.A. Thank God he wasn't so caught up in building his celebrity status. Thank God he wasn't so up on himself. Thank God he wasn't so concerned about the crowd. Thank God that when Jesus is being Jesus, he can stop and think about me. Peter, let me get in your boat. He wanted to get in your boat. Now, ooh, download, can I give you this? I'm sorry. He didn't even ask. Huh. Well, now I'll tell you this. I ain't got the money to have a boat, but if I did, don't you think you, Jesus, come get on my boat <laughs> without asking me? I'm just saying. Jesus gets in this dude boat and don't even ask. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because he is telling Peter that if you want to get blessed, you got to demote yourself as captain and let me get there. You know why you can't handle this? Bro, you distracted. Scoot over and let me get in the boat. See, Peter's problem was he was part-time fisherman, part-time Christian. See, as long as Jesus was in Galilee, he didn't have to commit to Jesus. Jesus is saying, I don't need no more part-time lovers, baby. You distracted, and if you want me to fix your mess, get out the way. Let me get in your boat, and I'm going to tell you how Jesus said he the captain. He says, not only I'm in your seat, you get out and push the boat out. Right there, he said, look, Peter, can you push it out with me? He's letting Peter know that there is going to be a shift of who's in charge. Y'all see it? So he says, push your net out. Because first of all, church, he's attracted to the distracted. Yeah. Woo! 
Holy Ghost. Second point, that he knows how to confront your confidence. He knows how to what? Confront your confidence. Y'all want to see it? Ooh, it's about to get gooder. Call me to the word. Mm. It says when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Dang, I'm, am, I, am, I, am I about to become one of those towel preachers? <laughs> Who's so in here? I need, a, I need an E in cursing. No, I'm just playing. <sighs> I've, never been, I've never sweated ever. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, look at this, y'all. Launch out into the deep and let your nets out for a catch. But Simon answered. Now, it's interesting because when he says go out into the launching deep, there should have been no but. Duh, what's the but for, man? A part-time Christian? What's the but for? Many of us have struggles with the prophetic word of God because we want to excuse our disobedience for seeking clarity. We need confirmations when God is saying, you don't need to confirm her, just obey. Everybody here got somebody's number that you with. You had to get their number. I got your number. You gave it to me, guess what? I didn't need no confirmation. I knew what to do with it. A dollar. Say, what's up, girl? We think we need confirmation. No, we just need to obey. As a matter of fact, you probably call me because I probably wasn't going to call you. Anymore. That's another story. Just launch out into the deep. I'm joking. Now, here's what I want to tell you. Here's what I want to tell you. That we have an uncanny knack to know how to adapt to bad circumstances. Can I help you with that? If your lights get cut off, guess what? I'm going to get some takeout, and we're going to have a candlelight dinner. Floor model TV, I don't need a TV stand. The floor model TV is the TV. We adapt. COVID, it felt so funny putting a mask on. Now you walk out your house and be like. You adapt. So what happened here is when you have adapted to a bad situation so long, it becomes comfortable. And where they were, Sister Asia Monet, was too comfortable for God to bless them like they needed to be blessed. You will not be motivated if you stay in shallow waters. And you want God to give you big whale blessings, but when you got goldfish faith. They are now in a place that's too shallow. They are in the shore, and they're too close to get the depth of God. They have become comfortable. And what comfort does is numb your spiritual consciousness. When you become comfortable, you can't hear God talking to you. When you become comfortable, you don't really get the revelation that God is trying to give you. When you get comfortable, you get deaf to what God is trying to speak. And you have adapted to your situation so bad. You ever walk to somebody's house and be like, what's that smell? And they say, what smell? Do you smell that? What smell? They have what? Adapted. And they have now become comfortable in their dysfunction. And they become so comfortable in their dysfunction, they don't want to move. Uh-oh. I, I think I struck a nerve. We're asking God to bless us, and God is saying you're in too shallow waters. God, I fasted all I can fast. Too shallow. I put my hands on this man, and he's still a nut. Too shallow. I've been praying over this woman, and she still don't treat me right. Too shallow. These kids are not too shallow. God, I've done all, I, I've had my prayer partners, and I, I've had my counseling sessions, and, I, and I've done all this, I've done all this. And God is saying, I'm not concerned with that. Baby, maybe the issue is not my lack of willingness to bless you. You have just not gone deep enough. And the reason why we don't understand 
that we're not deep enough because we've gotten comfortable in shallow waters. Can I make it live this way? Did I tell you about the time I almost drowned pretending that I know how to swim? I st- I'm 47 years old, don't know how to swim today. And I almost died pretending like I was going to swim. Here's the part that y'all going to laugh at me at. I probably could have stood up in the water. I almost died in waters I could stand up in. Pastor, what's your point? Many of us have gotten to the point where we're so comfortable pretending that we're deep. We're really drowning. And the problem here is I almost died because when I was drowning, they thought I was playing. So they didn't pay no attention to me until they realized them, bloop, bloop, them bubbles mean he ain't playing. Stop playing because you'll die around a bunch of folks that can save you because you want to pretend like you're so deep. But when you really... Stop pretending like you're okay when you're not. It's fine to say, I'm not okay. I'm struggling. I lack motivation. I'm broken. I'm hurt. I'm unmotivated. I am tired. I can't do this Christian walk. Can you pray for me? Quit pretending to be deeper than you are. Because Jesus says, it don't matter. You ain't deep enough. I need you to go deeper. You know why? He wants you out of your comfort zone where it's just you and the word. We go on voyages. We take our favorite book. We take our Sudoku. We take our self-help books. We take a lot of things with us, but we don't take the word. And Jesus said, if you out there in the waters and you don't have the word, first of all, no matter how deep you are, you're going to drown. But the only thing that's going to survive, help you survive in the deep, is the word of God. And so he says, launch out in the deep. Here's the problem, though. Peter says, but Jesus... I'm an expert at fishing. I'm comfortable doing this. Now, can can I preach it? Peter was talking to Jesus in two ways. He was talking to the creator Jesus in one voice and then the carpenter Jesus in another voice. And so do we. Can I get in our grits? I said our grits. At home, your grits too. Probably real grits. You probably haven't breakfast while you. Watch this. The creator, Jesus, he says, but Jesus, we've toiled all night and we didn't catch nothing. See, we talk to the creator, Jesus, that way, too. Jesus, I'm struggling and ain't nothing changed. Jesus, I'm broken. Jesus, I did it my way and it ain't working. That's talking to the creator, Jesus. But sometimes we get in our own little arrogance. We get in our sassiness. We get in our swag. And we talk to the carpenter, Jesus. Here's Peter talking to the carpenter Jesus. First of all, um, how many of y'all fish up in here? Like real fish, like catch, like catch something. None of y'all fishermen? Nobody? Okay, D. You're from Florida. You got to fish. I fish too. I fish at Bonds, Stater Brothers. I fish in all those places. I went fishing one time in my life, and it was the worst experience of my life. Arcadia, Louisiana, in a swamp. Keep your head on a swivel. Stuff slithering, all that. It was not fun. Out there for eight hours in the sun, humidity. You know humidity in Louisiana is bad. You know humidity in Louisiana is bad. You could punch the air in Louisiana. Out there, eight hours, didn't catch not one fish. So I am not qualified to tell somebody who fished how to fish. That's my point. I can't tell a fisherman how to fish. And Peter's talking to the carpenter, Jesus. And he said, hold on, Jesus. I'm the expert at fishing. You a carpenter. Now watch this. Holding the boat, that's you. I need something sanded, that's you. But when it comes to this fishing thing, it's me. And we do God the same way. I got this, Jesus. I only need you to fix the damage that is made when I mess up. I only want the carpenter, Jesus, to fix stuff, but don't depend on the creator, Jesus, to fix me. God. He was being a smart aleck. Um, but Jesus, don't you got sense? Watch, can, can, can I teach you? Can I teach you? And go to the last point. Kevin, Kevin, watch this, watch this. You know why Peter had a problem with what Jesus said? 
fishermen in those days caught fish at night. The fish come up at night and they're able to get all of their fish at night. This is 12 o'clock in the afternoon, 11 o'clock in the morning. Jesus, why in the world are you having us go fishing in the daytime when the fish don't come on the daytime? The fish come out at night. And Jesus says, that's exactly what I'm trying to tell you, that you may be an expert at fishing, but I'm an expert at catching. <laughs> the problem here is that you've mastered the mediocre. You've mastered average. You've mastered ordinary. But I come to do something supernatural. And many of us miss God blessing us because we think the way that he told us ain't the right way because we the expert and he not. And then when we go the wrong way and it's broken, now we want to talk to Carpenter Jesus. Carpenter Jesus, can you give me a quote on my life that's broken right here? I'm talking to the deep. He says, Jesus, I'll do it, but I just want you to know fish ain't coming out today. After all, I'm the what? Expert. You're just the what? He wants to confront your comfort. I say this, we'll go to point number three and let you go. Are we willing now to go on to the deep? Watch this, Latoya. And obey God even when we think it's different than the way it should be. Yeah. See, we don't have a problem following God when we know the coordinates, Mama Pat. It's when we just got to go this way and Jesus start off this way. Yeah. Now it's like, hold on, God. It's that way. And Jesus says, stop it. You're not the expert at getting you where you need to go. Can I, can I, give, oh, can I, can I give you my L.A. logic? If you was that great a fisherman, Brother T, how come last night? I mean, after all, you were repairing your nets because your way left you sitting there broken. So how in the world Jesus don't know what he's talking about? Obviously, you don't either. It can't get no worse than worse. And we get at our lowest point and sometimes still too arrogant to go deeper. Do you trust him? We say we trust him. Because we in church. I trust Jesus with that cross behind me all day. But when I get home. When I'm in that pillow and that pillow soaking wet. Because I'm when I'm stressing, when I can't sleep, when I'm tossing and turning. When we want we have to see this pill. Say, That's when you gotta decide. I gotta go deeper. A hallelujah in the church is par for the course. Baby, Isaiah do that. You ever seen this boy sitting in worship? He'll get in the mic and he'll jump. That, what happens when you're in the deep? Are oh, you going to drop your net? So you want to see what happens as we get ready to go? He knows how to confront your confidence. Last thing, he knows how to break that thing that broke you. Oh, Jesus, I love that part. He knows how to break that thing that broke you. If you trust Jesus and let Jesus do what he do and not try to be the boss and let him be the captain, understand that thing that was breaking you, he'll break it. Y'all don't see it? Let me show you. Come to, come to the word. We got we to gotta, 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 gotta go. Gotta go. Get you to the word. Y'all ready? Oh, gosh. There's so much more I want to give you, but I can't. I, I got I to gotta let you go. It says in when, verse 6, and when he had done this, when he had what? Done this. Verse 6, y'all see it? When he obeyed God, what happened when he obeyed God? They caught a great number of fish, and their nets were breaking, so that they signaled to their partners in the other boat, come and help. And he filled both the boats till they began to sink. Woo! Obedience will precede the blessing. Can I tell you what an old wise preacher said? I'm going to quote him. Here's what he said. Stop asking God to bless what you're doing and start to do what he's blessing. Them old preachers be having some good ones. I'm like, I got to get that one. 
He says, I got to say it again, bro. He says, stop asking God to bless what you're doing and start doing what he blessing. And many times, we ask God to bless our mess. Many times, we ask God to be the carpenter and break stuff that shouldn't have been broke if we just listened to him. If you would just listen to God and go out to the deep, there is a blessing in your obedience. Can, can I help you? There's a blessing in the deep that you wouldn't get in the shallow. Can I say it again? Many of us are not getting the fullness of God because we're in waters that are too shallow. Whatever your net is, God is seeing this. Let me just take 15 minutes worth of notes and crush it down in three minutes. I may preach this again because there's a lot of stuff there I want to teach you. But let's, the Holy Spirit is saying do it this way. We'll end it, we'll end it like this. Go to Isaiah chapter 6. Ugh! Holy Ghost saying shut it down. So I'll do. We'll preach it again. We'll, we got to because there's so much on the table right there. But I want to show you something. Because the first thing I want to show you that he's attracted to the distracted. Yes. He knows how to confront your confidence. He says, I don't care if you're expert. Go do it. Then we said he'll break that thing that breaks you. Here's the issue. If you go to Isaiah chapter 6, we'll, we'll, we'll land a plane here. Oh, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. I want you to pay close attention to me. I don't know if you were or not, but if you wasn't, do. And if you have been, continue. Because this is powerful for us. This is, this is a word straight for us. The Holy Ghost interrupted the message just for this. You know what's interesting? You know what we struggle with? Oh, thank you, God. Here it is. You know what we struggle with? Watch what happens. Back in those days, Nets weren't just the little nets we see. You know, we, we, when we think about a net, we think about a brother walking with a little hula hoop with a net on it and just scooping up some fish. And No, 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 no. I want, I want you to understand something. Well, listen to me. In those days, the nets were different. You know how big those nets were back in those days? I'll give you one guess. Anybody want to throw out a guess? 20 what? 20 feet? Them nets were a half a mile long. And what happened was, there's a big boat. See, when we think about boats, we think about row, row, row your boat. You got to think about it. It had to be a boat big enough for 12 disciples to be on there and Jesus to be asleep. Them boats weren't little. So they had a big boat and then a smaller boat. What happens here, the smaller boat goes out a half a mile from the big boat, and the nets come down with weights and draws, and they travel and they scoop up everything within a half a mile radius, and they drive into each other, pull up whatever they got, put the fish on the boat, and go on back. I want to give you that point to let you know that it wasn't no baby net. So you may think, well, that miracle wasn't a big deal. It was baby net. No, this net was made for a lot of fish. One more thing I want to tell you. That the same net that didn't work last night it's the same that he's saying put in the water today. Oh, can I say it slower? So whatever that broken part of you is, Jesus saying, I don't want you to get a new net. I want you to use the broken one. I, 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 I'm not giving you a new anointing. I just want to make the one you got better. I'm not changing your assignment. I'm just making you more equipped for it. Moses says, I can't do it. I stutter. Send my brother. Jesus says, stop it. I'll be with you. Jesus says, I don't need you to fix the net. I need that same thing that was a symbol of your failure to be a symbol of your faith. We'll go out to the deep. But when we launch with the same net that was broken yesterday, are we brave enough to drop our vulnerabilities where God wants us to? Are we brave enough to drop our place? See, we don't mind if Jesus gives us the right equipment, but Jesus says, you are the equipment. Will you just do what I called you to do? Will you put your broken net down and watch God manifest a blessing that's too big that you can, they couldn't even receive it? 
Isaiah 6, and we let you go. So that same net that was breaking them, the same net that was a symbol of their brokenness, Sister Selena, is now the same net that God used to break. The same thing that's breaking you, he'll break it. That same net that was a symbol of your failure, now God used it as a symbol of his overabundant grace. In other words, he won't move your brokenness, he'll use it to bless you. We pray for God to fix us. No, 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 use me how I am, God. Use my brokenness for your glory. Isaiah 6, I'll let you go. Look at verse 1. I'll let you go, I promise. This is the picture of where we are. This is the picture of the thing that should break you, God will break it. This is a symbol of not allowing your circumstance to make you be disobedient. This is a symbol of saying, I'm not all I could be. I'm not the best. I'm not the smartest. I'm not the brightest. I'm not the most eloquent. I'm not the best preacher in the world. I'm not the best pastor in the world. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. But you can use me. You can use me. I ain't the best administrator in the world, but you can use me. Yeah. I'm not a theologian, but you can what? Use me. I'll give you this and let you go. Isaiah 6 1. In the year of King Uzziah died. Y'all know this. I also saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his throne or his train built the temple. And it stood in the seraphims. Each one has six wings. I'm trying to read this fast because if I don't, I would be stuck here. So I'm trying to get through it. Oh, God. Six has six wings. Twain that covered their face. And twain, that's two that covered their feet. And twain, they did fly. And one cried to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the pulse of the door moved. Do you understand the atmosphere of worship was so deep that it not only moved people, it moved inanimate objects, that those doorposts were actually worshiping because of the heaviness of God's glory in there? Can you imagine the power of God's glory that make a doorpost worship? Shucks, that ain't what I got to say. So let me move on. And the doorposts moved, and the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. Then said I, this is Isaiah, he says, woe is me. For I am a man undone. Or, can we put it this way? I'm a broken net. I'm flawed. I'm fragile. I'm broken. I'm, didn't he say, who would believe our report? He's unmotivated. He says, I don't qualify to be blessed. My net ain't enough for what you could do, God. And God says, I ain't worried about that. Again, I'm not worried about people who think they can fish. You can be the master of fishing. I'm the master of catching. So look what he says. He says, I'm a man undone. He says, I'm not worthy. Y'all see it? And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Stop using excuses. Just obey. Let's finish, let's finish, let's finish. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the thongs of off the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this have touched our lips. Thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sins are purged, and your excuses are invalid. Because he don't call the equipped. He equips. Let me get to this and let you go. And I heard a voice from the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? A.K.A. who is willing to leave the comforts of your expertise and go out into the deep and put your brokenness out and be a vessel for my glory? Who's willing to be vulnerable and obedient enough? Who is going to go for me? Who is going to not let the excuse of their brokenness stop them from being a vessel for God's glory? Who in this house that God says, will you go? And you say, I can't swim. God is saying, you don't need to. I'm with you. 
All I need you to do is obey. Isaiah says, here I am. Send me, Lord. You preach that. Can I remember? Send me. In my brokenness, in my fragileness, send me. Let's pray before we pray. Mm. One more download. Just happened. I'll give it to you. Sorry, but this is it. I promise. At the end, the Bible says that he said, you'll no longer catch fish, but you catch men. Can I just say this before we go? I promise. You know what's powerful? That there's some things you'll never learn about God until you're in the deep. Most importantly, there's some things you'll never learn about yourself until you're in the deep. That there's a bigger capacity for us than we think. You ever go to the hospital and they say, before you leave the hospital, you got to breathe in this thing? And that little thing go up? You know what's interesting? No matter how much you breathe, there's still more room to go. And many of us feel like, this is my capacity. No, there's so much more left. And he said, there's so much more capacity for you to do it. But are you willing to go out into the breathing? Are you just do it brief enough to go home and get out the hospital? He said, you're going to catch fish. You know what's interesting about this shift? And I pray right now, I promise. Before he was catching live fish that was going to die. Okay, they weren't catching those fish. Like, to, to like, put them in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an aquarium. They, they was going to cook them fish. <laughs> Grill marks. Them eyes, them fish was. He was catching live fish that were going to die. But when Jesus gets in your life, you're now going to catch dead men that are going to live. Ain't that beautiful? Ain't that beautiful? That our life before was catching live fish that would die. But he says, I got something greater for you. That because of my testimony and because of you let me use your brokenness and because you obeyed me and because you now become motivated and now you do my will, you're going to take dead men, catch them so they can what? Live. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Oh, God, we love you so much. Your word is so rich. Your word is so powerful. And God, I don't know. God, God Jesus, I don't know if, if you made the fish come. I don't know. I don't know if you knew where the fish were. But you're the creator. You can do all things. Whatever it was, you made sure that when you said it, it was done. So we thank you, God. Hey, enlighten us today, God, because we are broken in the house today. We as Christians, we struggle. We just scared to get out into that deep, God. And we were to be honest with ourselves, God. We're a lot more comfortable in shallow waters. But the ideal is this, that unless we are willing to go out into the deeper things, unless we are willing to stretch ourselves spiritually, God, we won't be able to be fulfilled. See, the blessing did not come in the shallow waters. The blessing came in the deep. Help us, God. There's many of us that have been praying for things five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Many of us have been fasting. We fasted out. We prayed out. We, we, we meditated out. We read out. We, we are just burnt. But your word tells us today that we just went deep enough. And however far along we need to go, we're willing to do it, oh God. So help us today. Encourage us all. Everybody don't have David's testimony where he encouraged himself. Some of us needs to be encouraged. So today, in the name of Jesus, let us open ourselves up to our vulnerabilities so that we may be blessed and helped and let those around us be able and mature enough as Christians to not laugh or scorn or make people feel worse, but be a source of support and let the strong bear the infirmities of the weak, God. Let us be linked and bound together as brothers and sisters in Christ. That when one hurt, we all hurt. When one broken, we're all broken. That we have a care and a love for one one another more than our own selves God help the body of Christ to understand it in this season we need to encourage each other we thank you that your word power we thank you God that even though 
we're in our own brokenness. You know how to find us right where we are. That even when we're comfortable, you know how to confront us. But you know how to break those things that broke us. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We glorify you in Jesus' name. fortune cookie prophet and tell you I know. I don't know. And if I did, Sister Smith, can't do nothing about it. Maybe that's why I don't know. But I know somebody who do know. I know somebody who is willing. I know somebody who is able. I know somebody who see behind our mask and our mask. And he's saying today, this ain't no prophetic word, this is right out the Bible. Don't be afraid to cast your net out. Today, if you're in the house and you do not know Jesus and you're here today, what, what, what a good day. Any day is a good day to get salvation, yes? Any day is a good day to get the Lord. You may not know who he is. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, there's a song that said, I was sinking deep in sin, far from a peaceful shore, bury something deep within Seek it to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despair cry, and from the water he lifted me. What lifted me? When nothing else. No. Jesus loved you so much, my brother and my sister, that his love will lift you. And I don't care how cool you are, I don't care how expensive your wrath is, I don't care how many bells and whistles on the yacht of life you're driving in, you will sink without Jesus. You'll just sink in a nice boat. He's here today to lift you. You say, I'm not drowning, I'm good. You're spiritually. And love will what? Come get him today. Come get him today. Secondly, you may be here or online and say, I understand who Jesus is. He's my Lord and he's my Savior. I want to be a part of the Agape Christian Worship Center ministry. I want to join this church. I want to be a part. I want to, I want to connect myself and, and let the Spirit use me in this place. Come on. Y'all, come on. We would love to have you. Love to serve God with you. Love to serve God and bless God with you and love to grow in the grace of knowledge because believe it or not we as preachers and pastors understand that every time we preach and teach we're growing too I've never got to a point where I know more than anybody I'm still growing I'm still learning so we can grow together when God gives it to me I give it to you now we both know come be with us we would love to have you and finally we're praying for every missionary out there whether your mission is across the street or across the seas we're praying that God will be with you and bless you Amen. Amen. We have our announcements here. And um, after our announcements, we'll dismiss and let you go. Um, God bless you.
Hop. We have a, a message here online. And I debated whether to do this. I, I think this is appropriate. A uh, person is asking for help uh, to feed their family, but they put a PayPal account there. Um, you send us your information and we could discuss that. We would not send any money to you. Um, but if you send us your information, if there's a need, we will be more than happy to supply that need. And if the need is food, we will supply that need. You may say, why'd you do that publicly? Because I understand how things work. And if we take a stance and approach that's not serious, we'll get flooded with foolishness. I've gotten a lot of crazy messages online during prayer. We, we deleted them and blocked them because people have sent some very crazy things. And I don't want to take what God is doing and what God is teaching and God is moving and let the enemy come in and disrupt that. We will be more than happy to bless you if food is your need. I want to make that abundantly clear. We are more than happy to do that. We're not sending any money to any PayPal account. God bless you, my brother. We have our baptism next week, August the 7th. Yeah, that's something to clap about. Shucks. <laughs> baptism is next week. Baptism is next week. I'm so excited about that. Next week, we're going to get a tent. And guess what? We got water. So, everybody's like, wait, but we clap. You got water, man? We got water. So we have a baptism pool. The idea here is that we'll get a nice tent outside. We'll have a place for everybody to sit. And our candidates, we have four candidates for baptism. We're going to be baptizing them, four souls. They're going to be baptizing to the body of Christ. And I pray this, that we don't have our baptism to be like our church anniversary. We don't want our baptisms to be like our church anniversary. Once a year. We have a whole, we can pack the pace out, crowd it, and then we go back to regular life. We want to make this continuous. We just talk. We got to go catch some people, man. And then the baptism cleans them. We catch them, God clean them, and then we disciple them. That's the goal. So next week we have baptism. I'm so excited about that. Also, the last Friday in August, market. The last Friday in August, we're going to do a movie under the stars here. We're going to have people come out. You can be socially distanced. We'll have our lawn chairs and things of that nature. We'll have a movie right there outside. We're looking at getting a, a truck out here to get some free food and have a good time of fellowship. I think the bowling fellowship is very awesome. Um, <laughs> the bowling fellowship was very awesome. We win some, we lose some. I'll just leave it that way. Uh, but it was very awesome. Had a great time with the Lord, and I think that's a good opportunity for us to continue to uh, have different opportunities. So mark the last Friday in August. Um, that's that. One more thing. I've learned to ask for resources. So before we go to Bear Valley Rentals and rent a tent for this baptism, does anybody have one? See? Boom. Maybe borrow it. I Okay, thanks. Because you have one, that don't help me unless you let me borrow. All right, good, thank you. So, thank you, my brother. We appreciate it. Bear Valley Rentals, y'all lost that little deposit plus something. Another one, we need a Tesla. Does anybody have one? Hey, at least I ain't crap, though. I don't want a jet. A Tesla would be fine. No? Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think that is all, all minds clear. Our baptism our gathering, and our Bible studies that need to be back. I love y'all. So glad to be back. And let us pray so we may dismiss. Father God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We love you, we honor you, we adore you, we magnify you. For your name is worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the golden down of the same, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Now, God, I pray right now, God, 
that as we leave this place but never your presence, let all that we have learned and absorbed in this time of worship and in this time of the word and in this time of prayer and in this time of fellowship, God, help us to take it all and use it to be better and stronger and more like you, God. Please motivate us and strengthen us, God. Yes, we're broken. Yes, we're unfulfilled. But also, yes, we'll go. Yes, we'll go deeper. Yes, we'll allow you to use us for your glory. So we thank you, God, and bless your name for all that you have done through us and all that you have done for us. You are such a wonderful God, and we thank you now. Let our light shine that men may see our good works and glorify you. Let us be beacons of light, and let us be examples of you in the world. We love you. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Now unto him who is able to keep us all from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. And to the only wise God who is our Savior, to him and nobody else, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Let the people of God say amen. If you love God, say amen. If you love him a whole bunch, say amen again. I love y'all. Have a wonderful week. God bless you, people online. Have a wonderful week.